A very good morning to you. My name is Daniel Wahome and welcome to Sports Check on this Monday morning. It is the sixth day of June 2021. Well, we are going to be having conversations around sport. And as you can see, we have got some para athletes who've been taken through a GAPS program. They were selected after a lot of shortlisting. That's going to be the first conversation that we are going to have um, this morning. And as they seek qualification for the Commonwealth Games that will be taking place in Birmingham. Our second conversation is about a Sports Kenya Summit that will be taking place at the end of this month. And we have got Nehemiah Rugiri who from Niviara Executives Limited is the head of programs telling us about the activities that they will be doing. And then think of a sport that is a crossbreed of handball, netball, basketball. I mean, once you get them all across and you integrate them, you come up with something known as Kesto Ball. Uh, it started 125 years ago in Argentina. And we have got Lorenza Dera, who's the chair of the national body and the captain of the national women's team, Janet Owino. They will be joining us after 11.15. Those are the three conversations around sport that we are going to be having this morning. But also in the news today... Remember that the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission are continuing with the clearance of candidates who want to run for president in the August 9 elections. And uh, general election, remember that we have uh, yesterday, we saw the right Honorable Raila Odinga cleared now, and he is the presidential candidate under the Azimio Laumoja One Kenya Alliance Party. On Saturday, Deputy President William Ruto was cleared, and he's going to be the candidate under the Kenya Quanta Coalition. Walter Mungare has been cleared. Professor Wajakoya has been cleared. So the process coming to a close this week, and we've that's going to be taking place at the Bomas of Kenya. At the Kenya School of Monetary Studies, we have the Youth Enterprise Training Fund, and this is how people are going to be trained on this fund. Our reporter is Fred Woki, and the Cabinet Secretary for ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs, Jumusher, will be there. The Deputy President is going to be in Garissa today, taking his campaigns around the country. And also, we have got the manifesto launch by the on one uh, Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Alliance uh, Coalition Party. It's going to be taking place this evening at the Nyayo National Stadium. And also in the courts, we have got this appeal of the decision that was made about Mumia Sugar. There's a court of appeal. Uh, the, the matter has been taken to the court of appeal. Sarafina Robi is our reporter at the court. So remember, that's how we keep that part of the news stories that we shall be looking at today. This morning, a sign language interpreter within this hour is going to be Lucy Mwaura. Now, let us get straight into the first conversation and we want to talk about gaps. And this is a program that came through after an analysis of countries that were participating at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo, Japan last year. An assessment was done and it was found that it's just about seven countries across the world that have got athletes in multiple disciplines. So they decided, let's take a look at countries where there is potential and see what can be done as they head towards the Commonwealth Games. And three disciplines were picked, paratable tennis, powerlifting, and para-athletics. Now, we under the GAPS program in Kenya, the athletes who are identified are in studio with me for para athletics. And on my immediate left, we have got Nelly Jepto Sile. She is a short putter in the F57 class. Nelly, welcome to KBC Channel One. And then right there in the, the middle between the two ladies, we've got Vincent Mutai. He's a para athlete in the 100 meters T47. He's also a long jumper and He's also mad about football. We'll be telling you about that because he's actually a Kenyan international when it comes to um, amputee football. So he's represented the country in two disciplines. And on my far left, we have got Sylvia Olero. She is a discus thrower. And uh, Sylvia, congratulations. You're already headed to Birmingham. Thank you. Yes, and welcome. And let me start with you, Sylvia. Being picked for this program because it was competitive after, you know, the Commonwealth Games Federation made contact with... NOC and the Kenya Paralympic, uh, Paralympic Committee. Yeah, uh, it was good to be selected. And we didn't know the criteria they used because we are so many people that their names were submitted. But luckily enough, we only found ourselves four 
we have Nelly, Mutai, I, and Ellen. Mm -hmm. Ellen is a power lifter. Yes. So we were very grateful for being chosen to represent Kenya in our faculties in, uh, in GAPS program. Mm -hmm. So it was so nice. Well, and by the way, GAPS is a simple program and it's an inclusive pathway. And GAPS is an acronym as it simply means gather, apply, prepare, and sustain. Mutai, yes. you have competed for Kenya won medals in the long jump, in the 100 meters. What, did you, what was it like being selected for this program? Okay, being selected, I, feared, I felt proud. And I thank God. Because being among, uh, we have several athletes, mostly uh, under Commonwealth countries in Africa. And in Kenya again, I was selected. So I was lucky and I thank God. I think being, that was being, that was my success of achievement that I have done. So I was lucky and I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and let us now come to Nelly Sile. She is a short put thrower. F57 is her class. Nelly, what, what was it like, you know, being picked as a field athlete to train through the GAPS program? Mm, my class is F55. It is not 56. 56. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, I was happy well, because I was elected as part of CAP program. Because one thing I didn't imagine that I will be there among those will be selected. Mm -hmm. But because of the court grace, I was selected as part of the CAP program. And we were many, but I was lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for the athletes, um South Africa basically has become I mean for you South Africa has become a second home under the GAPS program and Nelly I'll start with you um, when you went for I mean GAPS Camp 1 what were some of the things that you picked up when uh, through this training program as you were also working with uh, you know your coaches uh, there's Michael Omondi and Caroline Marble my first time to go to South Africa because it was my first time to go to South Africa I wanted to see how South Africa people, athletes, do their sports. Mm -hmm. And I want to learn their sports and maybe to apply with mine to go somewhere. And my as of my first time to go there, I learn a lot mm -hmm. because I mingle with a lot of people with whom I don't know and whom they don't know me, but we were Let's say it was like one family because we were under CAP program. Mm. You didn't call there because you are a Kenyan, you call there as a CAP. And that is what made me that I have achieved something. Yeah. We'll be coming to those specific achievements, especially when it comes to technique and where you're placed when it comes to qualification. Vincent, yes. um, for you as a Sprint, uh, as a sprinter, yes. what was the experience of Camp One? Okay, to my experience, I have learned a lot. And so, for a very long time, I had specialized in long jump. But I was picked to, to this uh, program, Cups. And I think I, I performed good. Mm -hmm. I think that which made me to be among this was when I went to Tunisia, I think last year. Yes. Yeah, I think that put me to this place now, CAPS program. Yeah. What was the, um, talk about Tunisia and your, the times that you set and how you, you know, the, uh, we know that a lot of sprinters, uh, uh, we have got, I mean, sprinters and the long jump, they seem to, you know, come together. We have um, people like, we have Carl Lewis, a sprinter there. We have Lamont Jacobs, he calls himself the crazy long jumper. Yeah. What was that? transition for you? Okay, uh, last time when I was in Tunisia, I was competing in, actually long jump is my best event, mm -hmm. and I think I am the king in Africa in that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And 100 meters, I ran, uh, the weather was not good, mm -hmm. so I ran 12 of 13 at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I think when I went to CAPS program, Right now, I have a personal best of 11.20, yeah. 
which means you're coming up you're, you're catching up with all the others yes and sylvia for you as you know uh discuss through uh, what were the learning lessons from camp one you know camp one there was not much learning mm -hmm. because we went for a few days mm -hmm. we only stayed for around five days, five days. Mm -hmm. so the learning was not much we went there we stayed for two days then i think the third day the fourth day there was a competition so the learning was not much mm -hmm. though it was very cold but the experience was good yes but uh, the learning we get in camp two that is where we get a lot of learning but in the camp one it, on, it was only just few days for training and maybe introduction then we went for competition and then we came back home ah. yeah tell us about that competition and you know what you picked up knowing that in south africa take their their investment in sport is big yeah it was it was so good they have athletes like in my class, I'm um, F44. Yes. Uh, there are many athletes in South Africa and their performance is good. Uh, the challenge we have in our country, as you know, in South Africa, they have their gym that is meant for para-athletes. You want to train, you go to gym, you have your coach with you every time. Mm -hmm. And so they have an added advantage over us because we don't for me to get a gym like i stay in limuru i have to come to nairobi so that i i assess gym but for them they have their gyms with them you wake up you go and it is like they are they are i think they are like a, a, a source of living to them you wake up you go and train and you 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 perfect your skills for us you have to survive survival for the fittest so they are much more advantageous than that, than us but you, uh, even though they are very advantageous we still compete and defeat them mm -hmm. so that is the the better part of it because we are ahead of them yeah and um let me come for uh, for you you can you can participate actually in uh, how would i say two two events yeah. the short puts and also the discus throw yeah but for this program you are picked for the discus yeah um why the preference of for the discus rather than the short put yeah it's it is discus that is in commonwealth games mm -hmm. but there's no short put for my class mm -hmm. so they were supporting people according to the events that they have in commonwealth so for my class i only have discus but there's no short put ah. that's why i was picked in discus but not short put yeah. and now mutai yes um what when it comes to sprinting up for your class yes. um just take us through a race an ordinary race day for you yes mm -hmm. ile siku nakimbia kutoka pale call room kwenda kwa blocks kukimbia to take us through that process okay uh, being a sprinter you need to be determined be you need to be prepared well psychologically mentally and spiritually and physically again mm -hmm. Oh, when you are in the call room unakuwa na pressure sana unasasema ai kama leo na hesa piga false start mm -hmm. kuna vitu vingine unafaa inakukujia kwa akili like that cups program mensaidia kwa hiyo sasa ku kusui kuyasuia hiyo eh, kujifunza vile ni control na hizo pressure mm -hmm. eh yeah. ukiwa kwa block kitu ya kwanza unakuwa una tense sana una tension uh, kwanza una eh hey, unafikiria eh hey, ama huyu mwensangu anaweza leo anaweza nishinda so mm. like like kuna kuwa na pressure eh uh, uh, like for me nikiwa kwa hapo blocks sinanga sana pressure lakini starting yangu iko na kuanga week as uh, like mimi wajua kidogo lakini tukifika like 50 meters hapo na kajab na wenzangu yeah na uh, and when you mentioned that you know you move from 12 points to 11.2 improving yeah. by a second in sprints is usually very huge anywhere in the world how did you improve on that okay i, I told you in last year from tunisia i ran 12 of 13 mm -hmm. i had much i we went to south africa for the first uh, cups camp i ran a time of 11 
1187. And the uh, last one, last, uh, last month, we went to South Africa, Stellenbach, where I ran, I didn't feel even. I ran a, a time of a personal pace of 1120. Uh, being, uh, to run that one is not easy. It needs you more to train, sacrifice, and focus. Yeah. And now, Nelly, yeah. let me come to you. Um, when you talk about, you know, the, um, when, when we talk about this short put, uh, how have these comes helped you when it comes to your technique? With me, I was based in Javelin, mm -hmm. but because this program, co with the Commonwealth Games availability, the availability of events, of event, mm -hmm. I was picked in short put. It, I was an, like a learner. I was mm -hmm. learning now. Back to the Kwanzia Chini Kabisa. Yeah, I was a learner. I was learning, but I did. Because my best was five sixty-seven, mm -hmm. which I have never did like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did you find you know the uh, when it comes to the throwing and the techniques of the two events? How did you find uh, what were some of the things that you know you needed to learn or adjust when you moved from mm -hmm. throwing the javelin to the short put? You know, with the javelin. It, it doesn't need a lot of gym, mm -hmm. but with the short put, you'll need a lot of gym. Mm -hmm. now, to switch from that way, it is very hard. It takes me time, but mm -hmm. because, of, because I used to read them in YouTube, where mm -hmm. they were, places to learn a lot mm -hmm. so that I catch up quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when you do, um, when you follow, when you when you start, uh, start tra you know, training through YouTube and, you know, trying to pick the lessons, how then do you, I mean, how do you keep sustaining this, such that you do not lose your touch in the javelin, but you keep improving on the short put? You know, first you learn how to mm -hmm. handle the short put. Yes. Yeah. After that, how to throw the short put yes yeah so tell us what you um maybe you just using a uh, hand motion tell us how you basically this it you creep the the short put the short put mm -hmm. and then you put here and then you push it with this mm -hmm. yeah so you have to use all that yeah and now looking at some of the uh, marks that you would like to achieve Doing, uh, having done 5.6 um, in your class, what are, some, what are some of the things that you would like to improve as you, know, as you wait for that slot at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham? I should look on flexibility and mm -hmm. strength. Mm -hmm. To answer the flexibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flex tell, us, tell us, I mean, what the flexibility that is required for you. My flexibility, I need from the backside. Mm -hmm and the lower part of the my body mm -hmm. and then the strength i have to find it in a gym mm. yeah where is the gym that uh, you are using at the moment mm -hmm. this at yes. this particular mm -hmm. time yes mm, it is not repeat it again gym where yeah. are you doing your power training at the gym in Kasarani, mm -hmm. yeah. In camp. Yeah, in camp. Yeah, right. Yeah. Vincent, yes. for, for you, the 100 meters, always interesting for a uh, very interesting race. Now, um, what are the things that, together with Coach Michael Omondi, you have been going through so that you improve and um, as we wait for the Paris, I think, and uh, Tunisia Grand Prix later this year, we can see if you are going to be amongst those who are going to be called up to Team Kenya. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, to me and my coach uh, right now, Monty, uh, we are visiting, checking some drills, exercises on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Actually, my, my mentor was uh, Justin Catlin. That is the guy who made me to run 100 meters. <laughs> that guy, I, I, loved, I loved him. So I, I, am, I usually visit to, to him uh, on, on YouTube. <laughs> And Jack is how training program he used to train. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it, it helps a lot. All right. Yeah. W what are some of the things from his training program that uh, you have picked up that have really helped you? You know, move from uh, 12, 13 to an 11, 20, uh, and probably, you know, get into the 10, into the 10, into the, what would I call, uh, the high 10s. Yeah, 10 seconds. Yeah, okay. Uh, what has helped me a lot, and uh, I learned from Kathleen, is that you need to have power in, in your legs. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, I have been working on the gym, work, yeah, overloading my legs, get power. No, if you have power, you will, you will, at least you have power again to maintain that momentum when mm -hmm. you are running. Yes. Yeah. And earlier, I mean, you were talking about your techniques and how they affect you. Yes. Um, can you tell us, I mean, what you need to do to get the first 30 meters correct? Okay, the technique I have to get to the, the first 30 meters, you need to have a speed, mm -hmm. power, you have to have power in your legs when you are on the block. You know, when you, you are left behind from the block, you are losing some second. Mm -hmm. So... You need to have that power to catch up. You know, uh, like to me, I, I, I had been having a problem in some starting point. Like in the 30 meters, I don't have that power to catch up with the other at least. So, but now I think I am on the right position. I can, I can move on the, I can start very well at a block and catch up with the others, yeah. And Let me come to you, Sylvia, here. And for this event, which is the discus, which means that, you know, um, when you get onto the circle and trying to release it, when working with G GAPS Camp, especially G GAPS, uh, GAPS Camp 2, what were some of the things that, you know, the co you were picking up from Stellenbosch, which is a serious, uh, you know, sports science and you know um, and related studies university okay there are so many things like what i realized is that my hand is slow when it comes to releasing that's why okay just explain that i mean um because you have to really so you, talk about that release that moment the, yeah. how your hand is slow uh, instead of going faster like as in mm my hand is dragging so i don't get the the height the i mean the distance that is supposed to to be uh, there uh -huh. but i have strength in my arms mm -hmm. but the only problem that i have when i was dealing with the coaches that were there they told me that my my hand is is slow so i need to work on the speed of my hand mm -hmm. so that i may increase my length in throwing ah. so that is what i learned and they gave us they gave me some exercises that i have to do in order to speed my arm release so we have the medicine ball you lie on your back you throw it up while he's maybe your coach is standing like a height like this one mm -hmm like the chair then you are lying on your back down you throw the medicine ball then she picked it up there so that one helps you to gain your speed and also we have the elastic band so you have to do many rep reps mm -hmm. like you do like this you tie a band maybe mm -hmm. somewhere and you do a lot of reps so that your hand may get used to that speed ah so yeah. it's you are trying to you know try work against the, re yeah. the resistance using that band yes uh -huh. yeah and using that band um i, I let me think of boy uh, 2019 when you had uh, just over about about 25.5 25.58 um at the world paras and having made that change as you went through the training how much of how much of a change has there been in the distances that you are recording now it's it's much like uh, the other week we were doing some throws and you know when you are uh, you are throwing you measure the distance mm. now from the 27 56 i have from now 
the last week uh, have increased with around two meters so it means i'm not 27 but i'm going to 29. Uh -huh. so it means the the workout that i did in south africa through gaps program has helped me a lot and what i know is that after the end of this camp that we are having now uh, I would have increased by a number of meters again so that I may go to the bracket, the medal bracket. Mm. And that is what I'm yearning for. I would love to have a, a, a medal on my neck when coming back home. Everyone wants a medal. And <laughs> yes, that is Sylvia Olero. She is a discus thrower and, um, and she also danced the short put. She's a para-athlete under GAPS program. This was put together by the Commonwealth Games Federation after a review of the Paralympic Games. And Vincent, yes. uh, let me come to you because uh, you know there is you double up, you get involved in a lot of sports. Um, Vincent, yes. besides being a sprinter and a long jumper, um, is also the goalkeeper of the National Amputee Football Team. Um, how basically do you keep juggling all of I mean all, uh, all of these sports that you are in? <laughs> okay, to say that I think um, multiple with a side talent I'm mm -hmm. talented. Uh, in my school, I, I I'm a student in Sotik Technical, mm -hmm. so where I train with my colleagues. I am a striker when we play with uh, normal people like uh, mm -hmm. these uh, guys from. Uh, our airport bodies. Yes. So I, I do striking. But when we come to amputee, amputee is containing such so players amputed one leg mm. and one hand. So to me, I am a goalkeeper. So maintaining that is not an easy. Uh, it needs a lot of time. Yeah, like to me, uh, my program is, I don't uh, like time to maintain that is a uh, mm. bit challenging. And I, I, I had managed, by the way. Yeah, I, I'm the best goalkeeper in Kenya. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm proud of that. Uh -huh. Yeah, long jump. I'm the best in Africa, number one. Uh -huh. Yeah, again in Kenya, 100 meters. I'm the best. Yeah, so I thank God for the talent He gave to me. Okay. Yeah, and there is a story that I would like to go back on. In 2020, you know, everyone was hopeful that you would um, that you know, the pandemic would come to a close quickly and go for the Paralympics. You decided that uh, some small section of the, of, of the compound at home yeah, yeah. can be dug up and you had your own long jump pit. Yeah. Tell yeah. us that story. Okay, when the COVID came, we were yeah. refused to go to the stadium and train. Mm -hmm. They needed every individual to train at his home or everywhere where you can interact with the, your fellow athlete. So I decided I can't stay at home, just relaxing. I took a jump. I went, went, <laughs> <laughs> I went where the, I, I do craze, crazy, crazy my, my kettle, mm -hmm. yeah, home kettle, not mine, yeah, my family kettle. I duck there. And actually, it came through, I think I posted on my status, and it really trend, and then you call me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You told me you send me that uh, clip. I see it for you, yeah, and then actually it uh, it really helped me, cause uh, when the COVID uh, decreased, mm -hmm. we went to Dubai, and actually I was on a high form, and I won a gold in long jump, yeah, yeah. And now, Nelly, let me come to you. Looking at the kind of competition that is within your class and also in um, you know and what uh, you have seen from especially gaps too what is out there for you the opportunities that come all along mm. the opportunities which have come along mm -hmm. with the camp too is a lot i've learned a lot because for sure i was not doing anything but with that come, I've learned a lot. And I have come to know that you cannot just sit through without technique. Mm -hmm. You should have technique to throw and to train. You don't have to train any howly. You train according to the, what you are, event you are doing. You have 
when you are in short put you train in a short put way mm. and javelin also that way you don't have to mingle them because throwing are not the same yeah now there is also a story similar to vincent about you yeah you ma ha you made a homemade gym yeah tell us about making that i mean what you had to do and how you know you had to you know improvising they say is what makes you know some of our athletes great you know first the time first the thing we don't have gym in our place mm -hmm. you can you travel almost 50 kilometers to find a gym that is from from um, from oh. somewhere keep current river to mm -hmm. Eldoret, to Eldoret. Town. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, then I think what can I do um, I saw people doing in village gym work mm -hmm. with those st stone nini concrete. Mm -hmm. I asked them to make me one so that I should do practice with it. Mm -hmm. Also, I didn't have a javelin. I just make a stick which looked like a, j a javelin mm -hmm. to throw and also a stone. They m carve it for me. That is what I use. Yeah. When you're out in, uh, when you're out in Cape Karen. Yeah. Uh, and because there is a standard weight for a javelin, so how do you then, you know, try to adapt? And you've got the different mm. weight, uh, the different weights. Uh, I mean, the stick could be lighter than a standard javelin. No, mm -hmm. I didn't make the lighter one. It was heavy because I didn't have something to measure it. Ah. I just uh, do the heavy one because I didn't want to train with a light one, yeah. How, um, over, the, um, over the years, mm -hmm. how has that, you know, been coming uh, through for you? It was since 2010 mm -hmm. and then until 2018, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm using it. And what about the short put? How did they carve it for you? You know, carving to get, so that it becomes as smooth as they put uh, the short that they normally that would normally be used in a competition. There is a, a, a soft stone to carve it, even though it was somehow light, mm -hmm. but I wanted something which is round, yeah, to use it, yeah. And what would be the call for, you know, more para-athletes who are out in the North Rift, if you are to go, if you're going to, uh, if we are to grow this sport, the field event specifically, Yeah. what would you like to see happen? out there in Nandi County, Elgeo Marquette, was in Gishu? Mm, uh, we need people to support us, especially the counties, mm -hmm. to support the athletes, to find somewhere to train, to find new implements to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And support them with, you know, with someone with disability to f move from the village to come to town. It is very hard. When he had not accepted it, he will not come. Mm -hmm. Now it is very hard for the you to. We need to give them something like kuafunza, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Waelewe, wa imicheza ina saidia na pia wapewe kitu cha kujisaidia na yo de wakuje kunini train. Now, Mutai, yes. um, what have been your experiences having, uh, you know, uh, competing for Kenya in para sport, uh, in the long jump, and now the 100 meters, with the possibility for you uh, getting a slot in the Commonwealth Games. What has been that journey for you through and through, and looking forward to July and August? Yeah. Okay, there's been a lot of experience, challenges there and there. Um, Actually, you know, in 100 meters, sprinting, I mean sprinting only, mm -hmm. you need to sacrifice a lot. You need to give yourself to that event. And to me, I have learned a lot, I had several uh, grand brains. Mm -hmm. I have learned a lot. There is no grand brains I have gone and come without any medal in 100 meters. Actually, I think I came with only like, like one time I've come with only prawns, but mm -hmm. others have come with coal. So I have, l I have more experience 
and hoping so, looking forward. Uh, we are waiting the list from the Commonwealth. We see if we will make it to qualify for the competition in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And working with Michael Omondi, what are, because he's also, you know, a para-athlete himself, how do you share this information when you're in camp? Okay, working with my coach, you know, he has uh, experience. He was, uh, he was best in, at, at his time in touring para sports in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So he has shared with me a lot. He has teach me, like he's my parent now, when I am away with my real parents at home for mate. He's my father, he's my mother, he's my friend. He sacrificed a lot, even sometimes, you know, hey, you say, Vincent, how are you sure? He doing what the, psychologically, you know, when I am not in such mood, yeah, so he, came, he has helped me a lot. When, when, he come to, when it's come to training, he makes sure I am on the right mood. You know, you can't just walk up uh, in the morning and went to, and go to practice. You need to first, coach needs to know how, 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 how healthy are you? Mm -hmm. So he has, despite being the coach, he's my, he's like my doctor again. Yeah. Hey. He's everything now. Yeah, he's everything uh -huh. now. You know, you only you need to help with me. You just give yourself. Yeah, you, sh you, you be committed. So like for him, I'm committed to him. Uh -huh. So he don't have much problem. The only problem is that he's praying, he's praying for me to get a scholarship. Yes, management, that is it. So that is the problem for him now. And that is my problem too. But Problem we give, we are giving to God, mm -hmm. and God is above all. And disability is not in ability. Yeah. Well, Vincent, yes. very, very well said. And now, Sylvia, I'm working with Coach Marble. Tell us about you know when you work with one of the best field athletes we've had in the country. What are what's the journey through? Because <laughs> I know I know one coach. Um, I know Elizabeth Olaba. When she's a coach, she's quite tough. She, she can, you know, people, when I was a Leah, <laughs> takes no prisoners. She wants you to be the best. What are your experiences in with Mabel? Mabel is a good coach. Mm -hmm. She's like a mother, a mentor, a motivator. She always encourages you. And mm -hmm. you know, not every day you will wake up in the moods of training. Sometimes you are down, but she always encourages you. Mm -hmm. She helps you in your training and always encourages you to do more and makes you have confidence in yourself that you can do it. Mm -hmm. So she's just good. She's like a mother, like a mentor. She's a teacher. She's a coach. So she has so many titles and I love her so much. Nelly, tell us about your uh, field events coach. Mm, my favorite coach as Mabel is everything to me. Yeah. Kila kitu. Yeah, kila kitu. And the kidogo. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he helped me in a lot, mm -hmm. especially in movement. When I need my tools, is there for me. When I want to go to Phil. Is there for me also? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And now, um, let me ask: When it comes to your class, um, you're on a wheelchair. Yeah. Is there mm. equipment needs that you know you can articulate such that when you're in the competition mood, it works well for you? The kind of wheelchair you may need, or probably you know even having the the a short put of the right weight that you can use okay. and um a para-athlete, a gym that is made for para-athletes? Okay, with my class, mm -hmm. I need to have a chair, which I sit on it, to throw there, every implement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that chair should be, let's say, 70, 75 centimeters high. But the area is just the, the, the way you want. Mm -hmm. But the, the knee is 75 centimeters long mm -hmm. yeah 
with the short put I'm using three kgs to throw the short put javelin 600 grams yeah so all that that, that um if, when it comes to the seat that you've got to use that's about 75 centimeters, centimeters. high then i mean the circumference can be yeah, on depend your choice on your body is there any specific design that is required for this seat yeah for me with because i have a spinal cord i have to uh, upper crest but others can just uh, they just use it when it's flat yeah flat which mine i have to untie myself mm -hmm. have the the wraps to wrap myself yeah anyone anyone that has been supplied for you right now i uh, know so yeah, but, uh, Ukifuzu Birmingham ni kusema lazima sasa. Ah lakini nafikiria knock watashukulikia. Aha. Yeah. Najua knock ni wenzetu. Yeah. And uh, they are going to be doing that. Yeah. And as we come to close Sylvia, um you know looking at the Commonwealth Games it's former British countries but we know there are some of the athletes you competed um against when it comes to you know at the World Paralympic Games. Let me just think of people like who um Mandela Hoffman of South Africa, and you've got uh, Sarah Edmonstone of Australia. From the international events you've been to, how do you find the competition that you'll be facing at the Commonwealth Games? I think for now, the competition is not so much stiff, mm -hmm. but it's stiff. <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, yeah, because now we don't have the Chinas like Juan. Mm -hmm. Juan is the world champion yes. in, in discus throwing in my class but uh, china is not in commonwealth games so it is a, re a, a relief for us the <laughs> africans yeah. so the no. <laughs> and then poland are not there also uh, no they are there no they are, they are not. not yeah they are not mm -hmm. there but for the countries which are there you know you can you can compete with them utangangana na wao kwa sababu Akuna kitu sana wana kushinda na <laughs> Na tena, through the GAPS program, what we have learned in South Africa, the second, uh, the second, the second camp, yes. it was very nice because we realized that there is also pre-competition, there is competition period. And now there are, there are different trainings that you have to do during pre-competition mm -hmm. and during competition time. So, and also there is recovery. You know, we, we always train just because we are training without knowing when and what are we supposed to do at a given time. But through that camp, we've learned a lot that during pre-competition, you load a lot. During competition, you do light but speed work much. Mm -hmm. So now with the, the, the knowledge that we have now, I know how watu wa wata tupeleka mbiyo sana. In my class, wata nipeleka mbiyo, nitangangana nao. Kwa sababu hii kampi yenye tukonao for these two months, I know it will take us somewhere. Aha. Yeah, so I'm not afraid of anything. I will make it. Vincent, yes. there's a Paris Grand Prix and um, the build up for it. What is your outlook for the next two months? Yeah. Okay. Sasa hivi mimi na uh, you know size I have a best best of 1120 mm -hmm. and to maintain that it's very hard. So I'm looking forward first is to maintain that and to run above that. Uh, actually my target now is to run under 10. Under 11. And under 11, mm -hmm. under 11 I mean. Yeah, like my target has been 10.95. And I think with these two months to come, I am ready for it and I'm going for it. And I actually, uh, I am ready and God is there and will answer my prayer. Uh -huh. All right, and fin the final word is going to come from Nelly Silas. There is two months to the Commonwealth Games and there are also activities. What are your plans in between? Mm, I want to improve, and that is a must. Mm. I should improve that, and to add something like half meter, because shoot put is not is the way you think. To add one meter, mm -hmm. it, I want a half to be safe in six point something, yeah, meters. 
what is um, from the half? From what to? From 5.6 to 6.5. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 1. 6. 1. 1. Yeah. And how much work is required for you at that point? Especially when it comes to the power. Um, I mean, for an, for an event that is, uh, how would I describe it? Basically new for you. I need to be flexible and strength. Yeah. Because I, I don't have flexibility. But mm. for now, I have because I will, I thought how to have that flexibility. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. We have been speaking with GAPS Athletes. This is a program for para athletes, and GAPS is an is, um, for, uh, is an acronym for Gather, Apply, Prepare, and Sustain. And we've had Sylvia Olero. Thank you very much, Sylvia, for being with us. Thank and you. Vincent Mutai Thank and you. Nelly Sile, para athletes who are working with coaches Caroline Wobble and Michael Omondi. We take a short commercial break, and when we come back, let us have a conversation on sport and commerce.